These animations are blowing up millions of views across Shorts, Reels and TikTok. And today I'm showing you exactly how to make them step by step. If you found this channel through that viral motion graphics tutorial, this one's for you. Let's create a new project in CapCut. First, we import the original video and add it to the timeline. I'll zoom in a bit. Now go to the text tab, drag in a text box and extend it to match the full length of the original video. Type in motivation fades. Resize it roughly to match the original text and position it right on top of it. You'll notice the video layer shifts, so I'll press Ctrl Z to undo that and lock the original layer by clicking the lock icon on the far left. Now I can freely resize and position the text where I need it. Next, I'll drag in another text layer on top and this time I'll write Discipline Persists. Resize it and position it correctly. Then lock the text layers, add a new text layer, we'll just type a dot. Scale it up to 900%, scroll down and add a stroke. Change the stroke color from black to white and reduce the thickness to 3. Scroll back to the white circle and change its fill color to green. Now right click the text layer and create a compound clip. On the right, under the video tab, select remove background, then choose chroma key. Click inside the green circle to key it out. Go back to the basic tab and adjust the position of the circle to match the original one. Now select the compound clip. Make sure the playhead is at or near the beginning, then go to the mask tab under video. Add a mask and choose the split mask. Make sure it's cutting the circle in half. Scroll down and add a mask keyframe. Increase the feather to 30. I'll now hide the original video to preview what we've done so far. Press shift plus right arrow to move the playhead forward. Under the mask section, add another frame and this time move the mask to the bottom of the circle to reveal it fully. Press shift plus right arrow again to move to a third position. Go back to the first mask frame, copy it, return to the third position and paste it there. Press shift plus right arrow again to move to a fourth position. Now copy the second frame and paste it at this point. This creates an alternating effect of revealing and hiding the circle just like in the original video. Let's see what we've made so far. The animation is sped up. Now let's create the second circle. Drag in a new text layer and type a multi dash line. Scroll down to the curve option and increase the curvature. Add more dashes until it forms a perfect circle. Resize it to fit around the original green circle. Under basic, add a transform keyframe at the start of the text layer. Go to the end of the layer and add another keyframe. Set the rotation to 360 degrees. When we play it back, the dashed circle spins in place. Then we'll add arrow tips from Canva. I searched for arrow tips and chose one I liked. Change the arrow color to white, resize it and duplicate it. Position the arrows opposite each other, pointing in opposite directions. Set the background to green and download it as a PNG. Back in CapCut, import the arrow tips, add them to the timeline and extend them to match the video's length. Under Video, select Remove Background, choose Chroma Key and key out the green background. Resize and position the arrow tips on top of the spinning circle. This is the final result. Feel free to tweak it to match your own style. All right, let's break down how to make the second animation. First, we import the original video and add it to the timeline. So we'll go to Canva, create a new project and select a 619 video format. Set the background to black. I'll choose an arrow graphic, then add a screenshot of the original video for reference. Position one arrow horizontally, then duplicate it and position the second one vertically. Download this as a PNG and let's go back to CapCut. Import the arrow image, drag it into the timeline and extend the layer to match the video's length. Adjust its axis position to align with the reference. Now drag in a text layer and type multitasking. Adjust the text position. Adjust the layer length to match the video. Add another text layer and type I. I'll choose a font that gives us a rectangle shape similar to the original. Scroll down and add a stroke, then scroll back up to change the fill color to green. Right click the text layer and create a compound clip. Go to the video tab, select to remove background. Then go back to the stroke settings and make it thinner. Right click on the rectangle layer and create a compound clip. Now under video, go to the mask section. Add a split mask, resize it and position it on top of the first rectangle. You can see the rectangle selection is too big, so I'm going to crop it to make it easier to work with. To adjust the height of the rectangle, stay in the mask tab, move the mask up or down and add a keyframe 
in the timeline, use the original video as a reference for the mask's movement. Note, I added a keyframe on the transform under basic and I also clicked on the keyframe under the mask. It should be the same frame on the timeline. Let's recap. Move the playhead forward and check the new rectangle height in the original video. Let's recap. Move the playhead forward and check the new rectangle height in the original video. If it's lower, decrease the height of your rectangle to match it. Note, I added a keyframe on the transform under basic. Then go to the mask tab and adjust the mask height along the Y axis. Click on the keyframe under the mask. It should be the same frame on the timeline. Now duplicate the rectangle layer multiple times and position each one according to the other rectangles shown in the original video. To add the ball, go back to the text tool, create a new text layer and type a dot. Resize it to match the original ball. Right click the layer and create a compound clip. All that's left is to use the original video as a frame-by-frame -frame reference to position the ball accurately. As you can see here, I'm adding new keyframes and adjusting the Y position each time to match the original video. Sometimes the keyframes are close together on the timeline. If you want to keep the ball in the same position for a while, just copy the same keyframe and paste it at the point in time you need. To smooth out the ball movement, right-click on the ball layer and choose Variable Speed Animation. Scroll back up, open the x-axis, then click on each keyframe and apply auto curve. If you're not happy with how smooth it looks, adjust the curve handles and play back the animation to see the result. All right, let's move on to the third animation. First, we import the original video and add it to the timeline. Go to the text tab, drag in a text box and extend it to match the full length of the original video. Type a multi-dash line and I will choose this font. Resize the line and position it correctly. Add another text layer and add it to the timeline to create the line of the bottom animation. Resize it and position it correctly. Right click on each text layer and create a compound clip. I lock these layers as we don't need them and we don't want them to move. Add another text layer and place it on the timeline. Type don't rely on motivation. Then add another one and write Rely on Discipline. Lock both of these layers and move on to the next step. Drag in another text layer and type a multi dash line. Scroll down to the curve setting and increase the curvature to 170 degrees. Resize and position it to match the reference animation. Add three more curved lines in the same way. Adjust the curvature, scale, and position for each one to match the design. Then right click on each layer and create a compound clip. Note that the smaller curved lines don't start at the beginning of the timeline, they're offset. As you can see here, I'm adjusting their start points and trimming the ends to match the timing in the original video. Next, add a new text layer, type a dot and resize it. Right click on this text layer and turn it into a compound clip. Now we'll animate each curved line. Start with the first curved line. Move the playhead a few frames forward, go to the video tab, then into the mask section. Add a mask and select a split mask. Add a mask keyframe, then set the rotation to 90 degrees. Make sure you align the mask with the start of the circle. Move the playhead a few more frames forward, add another split mask, add a keyframe and set the rotation to 100 degrees. Repeat once more, move the playhead forward again, add a third split mask with a keyframe and set the rotation to 180 degrees. When you play it back, the animation should reveal the curved line from left to right. Repeat the exact same steps for the other curved lines. The only thing that changes is the rotation angles. Each curved line or semicircle should have three mask keyframes. These are the rotation angles you'll adjust for each one individually. If you followed all the steps correctly, you should see the full effect when you play back the animation. For the ball layer, you'll need to add a position keyframe each time the ball moves to the right. The keyframes must match the positions from the original video. Then right click on the ball layer and choose variable speed animation. Open the X axis, click on the first frame and apply auto curve. Repeat this for all keyframes on both the X and Y axis. Adjust positions, scale and mask rotations as needed. This is the final result. If you want more motion graphics, 
Watch these videos next. To stay updated with future tutorials, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.